Today we've got a pretty nice integral from our favorite integral suggester, who suggests lots of nice integrals for the channel. So let's see what we've got. We're going to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of cosine of pi over 2 times x all over x times x plus 1. And we're going to use the following tools, two of which come from previous videos, and one that comes just from standard manipulation of integrals. So our first is the natural log of cosine of x is minus natural log of 2 plus this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n times cosine of 2 n x. So that's a mouthful, but that will be useful for us. And then we'll have this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n natural log of n over n is equal to gamma, the euler mascheroni constant, times natural log of 2 minus half natural log squared of 2. And this is from the video where we find something related to the Dirichlet eta function. I'll let you check that out if you want to. And then finally, we've got the integral from 0 to x of cosine t minus 1 over t dt is cix minus gamma minus natural log of x. cix is known as the cosine integral, which is minus the integral from x to infinity of cosine t over t. And again, this third one is just from standard integral manipulation. Okay, so our first step here will be to split this using something like a partial fraction decomposition. So you want to think something like this. We're going to take this 1 over x times x plus 1, and we can end up writing that as 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1. And then we'll just multiply that entire equation by that natural log term. So that's going to leave us with something like this. We've got the integral from 0 to 1 of our natural log term. So natural log of cosine pi halves x all over x minus the integral from 0 to 1 of, let's see, we've got the natural log of cosine pi halves x over x plus 1 dx. Okay, so we've got something like that going on. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is perhaps give these things some names so that we can work with them individually. Now, I guess we could work with them all in one piece, but this is going to be a little bit more helpful, although we will be breaking some rules about convergence of integrals and sums without checking that certain theorems are satisfied, but they will all be satisfied here. Okay, so let's take this first integral and we'll call it i sub 1, and then we'll take the second integral and we'll call it, well, you guessed, i sub 2. And now let's work on this i sub 1 integral first. So how do I want to work with this? Well, I'm going to take my natural log cosine term and rewrite it with my first tool here. So that's going to leave me with minus natural log of 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of dx over x. So that's from this bit right here. Notice that's going to be multiplied by 1 over x. And then here we'll have plus the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n of the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine, and then we have n times pi times x over x dx. And notice that the half and the 2 built into this formula canceled each other, that half being up here with this pi over 2. Okay, so now we're going to do something. We're going to take this natural log of 2 and we're going to replace it with a well-known series expansion for the natural log of 2. And that is the natural log of 2 is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. But notice this sum is also the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. So that'll allow us to combine this integral with the integral that we have inside of the sum over there. And then after all is said and done, it'll look something like this. We'll have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity and then minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n and then the integral from 0 to 1 
of the cosine of n times pi times x minus 1 over x dx. That minus sign coming from the minus sign that's right in front of this natural log of 2. And now we're going to do a simple substitution here. Let's take u and set it to n times pi times x. That means du is equal to n times pi dx. That allows us to change this integral right here. But notice that the n times pi that's picked up by the x will be canceled by the one with the dx. So we don't have any sort of constant to fix in this case. So now we'll have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n, and then the integral from 0. And now it ends at n pi because of our change of variables. And then we'll have the cosine of u minus 1 over u du. OK, good. But now we can use this formula down here. And so let's see. That formula down here will take this integral and replace it with the following. Notice it's going to be ci of n times pi, the cosine integral of n times pi. And then we'll have a minus gamma and then a minus the natural log of n times pi. OK, so let's in fact bring that to the top for the value of this i1. OK, so after pushing things together in the last board, we ended up with something like this. So it's this sum term, but then we've got a cosine integral minus gamma minus natural log of n pi in the mix. Now what I'd like to do is observe that I can take this natural log of n times pi and, can, and I can split it up using logarithm rules. I can write that as natural log of n plus the natural log of pi. Both are of course attached to a minus sign. So it's really minus natural log of n minus natural log of pi. And now we can take that and then split this sum into three kind of natural pieces. So we have minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n and then ci n pi. That'll be our first piece. And then it'll be minus this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. And then we'll have our gamma plus natural log of pi. Importantly here is the fact that this gamma plus natural log of pi is just a constant. So we could factor that out of the sum. And then we'll have plus this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times the natural log of n over n. OK, cool. But notice that third sum, we have uncovered this second tool here related to the derivative of the Dirichlet eta function. So let's see what we get when we put all of that together. So factoring this uh, gamma plus natural log of pi out allows us to write this whole sum as gamma plus natural log of pi times the natural log of 2. Pretty, pretty clearly, I think. And then let's see, that thing over there using our rule right here will be, let's see plus gamma times the natural log of 2 minus a half natural log of squared of 2. And this first one is attached to a minus sign. So notice that we will get some cancellation there. So in fact, we'll have this gamma term here cancel out this gamma times natural log of 2 term. And so let's see. In the end, we'll have this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n c i n pi, that cosine integral thing. And then let's see. We can factor a minus natural log of 2 out of everything that's left. And we'll be left with a half natural log of 2 and then plus a natural log of pi. OK, so let's bring that up into the place of i1 and then we'll start to work on i2. So thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, think about subscribing. It really helps us out. OK, so this is where we left ourselves off. I've written the value of what we called I1 right here. Notice I took that half natural log of 2 and eroded it to the natural log of the square root of 2 just to kind of push some things together. I think it looks nice like that. OK, so next up, let's work on this I2. 
And the first thing that we'll do is use our natural log expansion on that natural log of cosine pi over two times x. And so let's see, that'll give us minus the natural log of two over x plus one dx from this term right here. And then after that, we'll have plus this sum as n goes from one to infinity minus one to the n plus one over n. And then let's see the integral from zero to one of cosine of n times pi times x just as before over x plus one dx. And now I'd like to make a quick observation that this integral right here is fairly easy to calculate. And what we'd be left with is minus natural log squared of two. I'll let you check that if you need to. And now for this second integral, we're gonna perform a substitution. And it's the substitution that is pretty clear, which is u equals x plus one, meaning du is equal to dx. So let's see where that leaves us. We'll have this minus natural log squared of two, and then plus this sum term. So let's see, it's alternating. We've got an n in the denominator, and now our integral is gonna go from one to two instead of zero to one. And then we'll have the cosine of n times pi times u plus n times pi all over u du. Okay, good. Now I'd like to use a nice trick, and this has to do with the periodicity of the cosine term. So we can take that cosine of n times pi times u plus n times pi, and we can write it as minus one to the n times the cosine of n times pi times u. I think that's pretty clear because cosine is two pi periodic. So adding an even multiple of pi keeps it the same. Adding an all odd multiple of pi will negate it. Okay, cool. So let's use that in this integral right here and see what we have. So we'll have this minus natural log squared of two, and then this sum as n goes from one to infinity, minus one to the n plus one over n. And then we'll have another minus one to the n, which notice is gonna get rid of this, just leaving us with an overall minus sign. So again, that's by putting this minus one to the n plus one and that minus one to the n together. And then our integral from one to two of the cosine of n times pi times u over u du. But now we can do a substitution of this integral back into an x type term. Maybe we'll set u equal to, or maybe x equal to two, or sorry, n times pi times u. And that's gonna leave us with minus the natural log squared of two, and then minus our sum as n goes from one to infinity, we have this one over n, and now the integral from, this is gonna be pi to two pi, I should say that's n pi to two times n times pi of the cosine of x over x dx. So we're left with something like that. So now let's bring that up and do the last couple of steps. All right, so this is where we left off. Now I'd like to take this integral that we see right here and split it up into two pieces. So the integrand is gonna be the same, but it's gonna look like this. It'll be the integral from n times pi up to infinity of this cosine of x over x dx minus the integral from two times n times pi up to infinity of cosine of x over x dx. So obviously if you put those together, you'll get the integral that we have there in the green box. And you might say, well, why do I wanna do that? And that's so we can use this formula down here for our cosine integral. Notice that's gonna be along with this minus sign right here because that'll put a minus sign here and a plus here. And our cosine integral has this minus sign kind of built in, if you will. Okay, so putting all of that together, we have the minus natural log squared term is just still along for the ride. And then this sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n, 
And then this ci n pi minus ci 2 n pi, that cosine integral evaluated at n pi and 2 n pi. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to split that sum into two pieces. So let's see, we've got our first piece, which is the ci n pi over n. And then our second piece, which is, let's see, the ci 2 n pi over n. And I'm going to do this nice trick here. I'm going to put a 2 in front here and a 2 in the denominator. So let's see what's happening here. We're taking all of the terms and we're subtracting off two times each of the even terms. But that's going to switch every even term with exactly its negative but leave the odd terms unchanged. But that means we're going to have an alternating sum where the even terms are negative and the odd terms are positive. So with that argument, we can push this together into this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n and then ci n times pi. Okay, so now let's bring that up where we see i2 and then do the last calculation. All right, so here's where we left off on the last board with our i1 and our i2. Observe I took this natural log squared term and I did a goofy thing with it. I took the natural log of 2 and I replaced it with 2 times the natural log of the square root of 2, obviously using some logarithm rules there. So let's notice that this sum with our cosine integral occurs exactly twice with opposite signs, so that cancels. And then notice we've got two of this type of term and negative this type of term here, so that's gonna subtract down to exactly one of them. So that's gonna give us the natural log of two, and then we'll have after that the natural log of the square root of two minus the natural log of pi, because that natural log of pi is attached to a minus sign. Now, I guess this is a suitable answer, but I think you can put it together into one nice thing that looks something like this. Natural log of 2 times natural log of square root of 2 over pi. And that's a good place to stop.